10 a.m. I didn't actually just wake up, surprisingly. I woke up like right before nine o'clock. I already fed Nixon, I already changed low. Now I am going to put on some sunscreen and maybe start my makeup, blow dry my hair because um, I don't know if I've talked about this on here, but I thought I had psoriasis and it turns out it's not psoriasis. I went to a dermatologist and they said that I didn't have the scales that they needed to see to call it psoriasis. So they think it's just seborrheic dermatitis. And um, what they prescribed me was working. So I just used the shampoo in the shower right now because I haven't used the shampoo in like a week. So I think like once a week is good to use it. But I need to blow dry my hair right away because I noticed that letting my hair air dry either makes it feel greasy or I don't know, it feels like the flakes come back. Maybe not recently, but it's just what I do. So I always have to blow dry my hair. I can't just let it air dry. So I'm going to do that, but I'm obviously not going to film that because it's too loud. Um, I already put in my moisturizer. Well, I put in my Glow Recipe uh, serum and then my moisturizer. And now I'm going to put on some sunscreen because you have to wear sunscreen every single day. I, I don't care if it's gray and winter out. I wear sunscreen every day, even in Washington. Um, the only thing I don't like is I use this sunscreen. What is it called? I think it's Bliss, like the Bliss sunscreen from Target. I get the little like trial size that's like five bucks, but I don't like how it kind of pills. I feel like it pills under my makeup or if it's paired with my Glow Recipe Serum. So it kind of makes my makeup look patchy. Maybe it's from the Tretinoin. Because a lot of times I know I notice it breaks up right around my eyes. And of course, I use the tretinoin right around my eyes. So I don't like get wrinkles there. Sunscreen I usually use for my face is the, oh my god, L to MD. That's what I use. Like the tinted one. Um, I didn't like that at first. Because it has the feeling of like when you get a Huggies baby wipe or a Pampers baby wipe. And you wipe it on your face. And you like feel that like kind of tingling sensation. And it smells like a baby wipe. Also, it makes my eyes water like crazy. But one time I used it because that's all I had. And I just kept it away from the eye area. And it was fine. And it sits well under my makeup. I need to get a refill of that but the only thing is you can only get it from a dermatologist or from I think it's like skin store I hope skin store is legit I'm pretty sure I looked up their website and it said like that was one of their retailers but it's like $40 and I'm not trying to fork out $40 and then wait for it to get here because I don't even know if my dermatologist sells it and then my dermatologist is kind of a drive away so I'm just gonna have to use the little bliss one and hope it doesn't get patchy underneath. I still have to feed Lo because she decided to sleep in until like 10, 15. Um, cause I got out of the shower and she was finally awake. So I changed her, got her to brush her teeth and, um, I need to go feed her. And then once Nixon is dressed, I'm going to go take them to probably get a haircut. Well, not her. I'm going to take Nixon to get a haircut because he needs one. And I always like him to have a fresh haircut before we go to California because I know there's going to be a lot of pictures. We're going to see a lot of family. And he just looks nice and clean cut with a fresh haircut. Lo doesn't need one. I really wish she would let me cut her bangs again so she could have the cute little girl bangs. But she doesn't want bangs. She likes letting her hair grow out so she can have the little pieces, which is fine. It's her hair choice but it does suck because a lot of hairstyles look messy when she doesn't have her clean cut little bangs to leave out and she's at the age right now where she doesn't want me to do her hair all the time so I always look like a bad mom because I'll be done up and then she doesn't have her hair done and I'm constantly asking can I please just throw it up can I please do something she's like no but whatever it's her life girl you live it um okay so, I'll talk to you in a little bit. I already blow dried my hair, and I was about to straighten my hair, but then I was like, uh, maybe I should vlog, like, while I do these daily things. And I was trying to find this tripod that I had, because back in, like, 2020, this company messaged me and wanted to do, like, a gifted collab if I reviewed it for them. So, they, like, sent me the money, 
so I could buy um, their like tripod and I liked it, it was fine, but it wasn't um, vertical, it only held like my phone hor horizontally. So I was just like, yeah, you know, like I wouldn't get much use out of it unless I'm using my camera because I usually like film TikToks. And then I feel like I gave it to my husband or I just like put it away and now I don't know where it's at. But I really regret it because I could use it for vlogging again because I realized like it could probably attach to my little camera. But I don't know where the fuck it's at. I've looked like in every spot that it could possibly be possibly be and then I asked my kids if they've seen it they said yeah but then it turns out they saw one that looks like it which is what I'm using right now it's a blue one that I bought from Best Buy years ago when I bought this camera but I don't like this one because one it was expensive and now I look online it's like super cheap so no wonder but two the attachment for my camera it's supposed to like click into place on the tripod and it doesn't click into place all the way like it'll kind of do it but if I move it too much my camera will fucking fall off so I am stressed about that and I don't want that to happen like I'm so tired of this stupid little bendy tripod thing it's not even a good tripod it's like a vlogging stick it's like the bendy vlogging sticks and I can't bend it without my camera going and coming up so I'm stressed sure about that but it's fine for right now it is holding my camera fine on the carpet so I'll just have to make do it feels like I have to fucking make do with everything like this camera it's the Sony a5100 I bought it because I was into like beauty like I wanted to take makeup pictures and then all the beauty gurus said like it's what they vlogged with <laughs> come to fucking find out it's horrible to vlog with because it fucking overheats after seven minutes of recording and there's no fan on it like there's no way to attach a fan nothing like that to like cool it down and you also can't do like your own little audio like I can't get a road mic or anything because there's no like audio like input or output thing there's no jack to do audio so I really regret not getting like the Canon one um what was it the Canon G7X or whatever but some people complained about that too. I don't know. This one has just given me problems. Like, it is good for picture taking. I'll give it that. But it's kind of hard to use because it also does the, I don't know, what like the AVHD or whatever the fuck it's called. And the XAC. I don't know. It's just like has all these weird settings. And it has made it so difficult to film and like transfer to my computer. And I've had to like... Sometimes it doesn't want to work when I'm trying to transfer photos. So I've had to like put the memory card into my Canon to like transfer photos. And then if I try to put the memory card back into this camera, it will say like, oh, can't read. And I'll like lose my shit. And then I ended up buying my own memory card specifically for this camera so I could vlog from it. Because I'm so tired of it being like... A bratty little bitch and I want to get my use out of it because it was like a $500 camera like oh I'm trying to think yeah it was like a $500 camera and I want to get my money's worth but I'm like fuck and then ugh, okay this is like the worst part about someone like gifting you something so Skylar knew that I wanted a better camera I was thinking maybe like a DSLR one with like the little screen so I could see myself and, you know, get better footage because this wasn't wasn't doing it for me. And one day, well, back like years ago when we were living in Hawaii, he just, he got me a camera and it was like amazing. I was so happy and grateful. Like he snuck it in our cart. No, he checked out ahead of time. And then he checked out again when I had our regular cart and I met him up like at the Target checkout. And it was a wonderful gift. It was the Canon T5, like the Rebel or T6 or something like that. I don't know. I think it was a T6. And beautiful pictures. And yes, you can record from it, but it doesn't have autofocus. I think that is, that's what it's called. So you have to actually be watching and like focusing on whatever you're filming. And then it doesn't have the screen that flips up so I can see myself or flips to the side so I can see myself. So I've tried filming videos on that and I'm just fucking blurry the entire time because I'm not going to ask someone 
to like film me on it so I cannot see myself on it like it's I can't use it for filming now if I'm filming other things yeah like if just you know my family I'll use it for that but I actually just use it strictly for like photos because when we go on vacations or whatever like it takes beautiful photos I couldn't ask for a better camera but yeah I'm just like fuck dude like another what like $500 wasted on another camera that doesn't do everything that I need it to do so that's where I'm at with that and I'm at 6 30 right now six minutes and 37 seconds so it'll probably have the little like temperature button and start overheating and tell me to like let it cool off so I'll be back okay I straightened my hair it's all done I desperately need a haircut but I don't have anyone to watch my kids so that's gonna have to wait until they're probably in school and I also when my husband was still here and I could get a haircut I had that scalp stuff going on and it was embarrassing I didn't want to just have this all over someone's chair so when he gets back I will get a trim because I can just feel the ends are dry even though my hair is nice and soft you know like when it starts to get tangly at the ends yeah so hair straightened Clothes are still not put away. Bed is still not made. But it doesn't matter because we have other things to get done today that are more important. I still have to get something for Lowe's party, for her team party. And then I want to get Nixon's haircut today. Well, if not today, probably tomorrow. But I really want to get that done today before people get out of work because then the barbershop is all full. And I think that's all I need to get done today. Yeah. And then if I have time, I will come home and clean my room. Perfect, beautiful. You brush your teeth, let me see your tongue. I can't do the it, back because it chokes me. Yeah, that's fine. And you had a grape juice, so it's just stained. It's not like dirty, it's just stained. It's okay. It'll come off like when you brush your teeth tonight, probably. Maybe if I suck it with my spit. Maybe if you drink water too, it'll eventually get it off. Don't put your feet on my bed, please. Thank you. I forgot to show you, but I put the toys away. The kids helped me a little bit. I need to vacuum and pick up other things, obviously. This doesn't stay here. That needs to be put away. That needs to be hung up. I need to put that in the garage or something. But, yeah, basically it's just the dollhouse. I think I want to get rid of that. Maybe I'll get another basket eventually because that just looks horrible there. But we just have to deal with it. This is where, like, the plushies... The dolls will be, and then just their miscellaneous toys. Yeah, I really need to keep a ring light in my kitchen because the light all comes from behind the island or like to the side. It's not really a great island. And then I have a sliding glass door, and it's all coming from the side. Then when I put the lights on above me, they're horrible, and they just shine light on my forehead and bad hairline. But right now I am still in my robe and still haven't done my makeup because I realize it's 12 o'clock, so I have to make the kids lunch. They wanted spaghetti, so I am just adding a little oil because if I don't add oil, I don't know the science, but the boiling like overflows in this cheap little like Ikea pot. So when I do add oil, it doesn't do that. I haven't eaten anything today and you may think that's weird. Bless you. But my pill makes me not hungry. Like. I have plans for breakfast all the time. I take my pill, I drink a little bit of water, and then I like get hooked on whatever I'm doing in the moment. And I realize, oh shit, I haven't eaten. And then I'm like, oh wait, I haven't had my coffee. So that I'll have my coffee. And then I'm like, oh, I'm repulsed by the thought of food right now. So I really don't eat my first meal of the day until like two o'clock in the afternoon. But I will have my coffee. I usually have hot coffee or I'll get Starbucks but I'm trying to save money and use up the creamer that I have in my house because it's gonna be bad by the time I get home from California. So I'm just gonna make some iced coffee right now. I don't have a Keurig anymore because I had it for years and I just felt like, I don't know, maybe it was old. So we threw it away. Oh, <gasps> beautiful, I love it. So I threw it away and then I realized I shouldn't have during the pandemic because I wanted coffee and I just wanted like single serve We weren't having people over there wasn't a need for like a huge coffee pot every time So my husband got this little $20 Farberware. It's like a Keurig But it's way cheaper. It's obviously not Keurig brand, but it makes 
six ounce, nine ounce, 10 ounce, 12 ounce, or 14 ounce drinks. And it can either be K cups, like it, they have the attachment for K cups, or they have the attachment for ground coffee, single serve. And that's all I need because I'm usually the only one in the house who's drinking coffee like that. God, the lighting sucks. Because Skyler will make himself coffee and then be like, mm, I realize I didn't like coffee. And he does it every time. I think it's because he'll finally make himself like a sweet coffee and he'll love it. But then he'll forget about it and give it to me. And then, you know, just like the Keurig, it makes a cup. And then, yeah. It's what I do like. It is smaller than it. Keurig. I guess you could get the single serve one, but this is cheap. It was like 20 to 40 bucks. Can't beat that. I just like that it has, you know, the little grounds. You don't have to get your separate, like, filtered one that's an off-brand one of the Keurig to put in the Keurig. Like, it already comes with one for either or. Change of plans. I just realized that I don't have pasta noodles. I thought I had angel hair pasta, but I only have rigatoni. Yeah, so they wanted spaghetti and they're like, no, it's not the same thing unless it's spaghetti noodles. So I was like, okay, then do you just want ramen noodles? And they're like, yeah. So Nixon's getting regular top ramen. I don't cook extravagant things. My kids are very picky and simple. I wouldn't consider myself a pick me because I don't pride myself in knowing how to cook and clean and be the perfect housewife. I don't give a fuck. I don't need to prove myself in any other way. I have no joy for cooking. I clean because I get stressed out and I just can't handle the mess. Um, so that is basically my job, but I always get help from my husband. So it is overwhelming when he's not here. I don't cook because my husband is the one who is passionate about cooking and I'm not. It is boring. It takes longer than it should with me. So I do what I have to. I will make things from scratch. I will follow a recipe, but no, I don't need to prove myself and be like the best cook and call myself wifey. Look at me. I can cook meals. Don't care. No. If my kids ask for something, I will learn how to cook it. I will cook it for them. But they're very simple. They literally asked me to make an omelet the other day for the first time because they were watching Bluey. And Bluey was making omelet, omelets or whatever. I did it. I don't have a problem with it. As long as I have the ingredients, as long as I have a recipe to follow, I'm good. What's funny is like for Thanksgiving, I always cook a Thanksgiving turkey. Why? Because there are tutorials that I follow and it's easy. But if someone is gonna like, need all this crazy seasoning and need all this, um, just, I'll do it if it's in the recipe. So give me the recipe. Like, don't make me make it my own because I can't make things my own because I'm like, I'm gonna mess it up and it's gonna taste bad. No, my husband is someone who can be like, oh, it needs more this, it needs more of that. So that's why he'll just wing it. That's why like, I'll get my Wella's recipes for the candied yams. Love making that. My Wella salsa. Mmm, that takes kind of long. That's a long process, but I can make it. I have made it before, but it's easier if I just let my husband do it because he's the one who makes it all the time just for fun. And he knows when to add more garlic salt. I think my problem also, aside from not enjoying cooking because it's just long and boring, is that I don't have a great relationship with food. Like, I... I had an eating disorder when I was younger. And so I am afraid of like too much sodium, even though I eat ramen noodles. But like, if I'm the one having to dump all the seasonings in, I'm gonna be like, oh, it's gonna ruin it or it's gonna like make me bloated or whatever. But if someone else is doing it, I'm like, you know what you're doing, go for it. I feel like I always say this, but all that just to say my kids are eating ramen instead of spaghetti because I was out of spaghetti. And I'm trying not to have to shop for more than what I already have in the house right now because we're not gonna be home and I don't want anything to go bad. And even if it can't go bad, I just forget about stuff if I didn't just buy it, ADHD. So my daughter's gonna have this and I know you're thinking, oh my God, it's too hot for her. Correct, I eat this and it is not too hot for me. I love it, I put a lot of lemon juice. But what I do is use like half the sauce pack and I don't use the little seeds that make it taste spicier. And she's fine with it. I do put lemon juice. I think I'm gonna just split it with her today because I usually eat one of these. I'm over here talking about sodium. One of these whole packs is 530 calories. And, oh, the serving size is one bag. I thought it was two servings in one. But if I split this in half, that's like a 215 calorie little lunch. And that's perfect for me. But I probably won't eat until after she does because I won't be hungry. Oh yeah, 
my iced coffee. See, like you can be medicated all you want with ADHD, but you will focus on the wrong things. So like I'll have to already be focused on work and then start doing work. Speaking of fucking work. <gasps> okay, it's 12. This is around the time or 1230. This is around the time that I usually like go on my phone and I start scrolling through our work accounts because there's time differences. So we have Philadelphia's or surrogacy center of Philadelphia, which is three hours ahead of me. And then um, Hawaii surrogacy center, which is three hours behind me. So sometimes I'll wake up and I'll wanna like post things for Hawaii surrogacy or like start, you know, just sharing things or liking things. And I'm like, oh my God, it's still six in the morning. And then a lot of times by the time like my hair and makeup's done, I'm like, okay, I could just easily post this right now. I don't have to wait till tomorrow for Philadelphia. I'm like, oh, they're probably all asleep. So right now it's like three o'clock, 3.30 in Philadelphia. So I'll go look at that stuff, see if there's anything I should post or any comments I should respond to. That's another thing. Like I respond to messages and comments and I don't want to seem unprofessional from a professional page responding to someone at like two in the morning their time. So yeah, that's when it gets tricky and I'm just like, oh. My husband will be like, you're always working. I'm like, I'm actually not. It's just that I'm always stressed about like, should I be working right now? Because what is the time zone here? Should I post this now? Or should I just edit something really quickly and then wait till tomorrow? And then hopefully remember tomorrow at a good time. It's all bad, but it gets done. I hope. A lot of times I feel like I'm gonna get fired. And then my coworker's like, no, we need you because you make us look like we're active online. And I'm like, yeah, but I feel like you could do better than me, but let's just hope I keep this job. Actually, this is the longest job I've ever had. Thank you, ADHD, because this is the first job I've ever had with my ADHD medication. ADHD medication. I've never been medicated in my other jobs. It works. Or I just have a really nice boss. That too. Back to the iced coffee. My ice is already like melting. But I use this International Delight. This is my favorite creamer, the sweet cream, the Cold Stone like ice cream. It is 35 calories a tablespoon, just like any standard creamer, but I don't use one tablespoon. I do five for iced coffee because I don't want to add anything else. Like I usually add Splenda to my hot coffee, but then in ice, it doesn't like dissolve it. So I just do five of these. So we do one, two, three, four, five. And what is that? Five, 35, 35 is 60, 70. So 140, 175 calories, plus what the two calories that coffee is. So. I don't add anything extra, no syrup, nothing, and it's sweet enough like that. I would pour this in here, but I, like, I'm afraid of it bursting, because one time my cousin did something weird like that and it shattered everywhere. So I'm gonna put a few ice cubes in here first, and then I'll dump it in. This is just a normal person coffee, okay? I'm not a barista, I've never worked at Starbucks, I've never claimed to like espresso. It's just, I just want regular sweet coffee, and I don't want it to be hot, that's it. Nothing fancy. I don't have the fancy espresso machines. I don't even know how to use that. That's another thing, like I love coffee, but I don't think I could learn how to make coffee. I feel like everyone has their thing and people who know how to do that, like that is talent and I'm gonna leave it up to you, okay? I say that, but then I always end up taking on like a new hobby or skill because I'm tired of prices of things and I wanna just do it myself. Like I do that with my nails. I did that with my hair, especially in quarantine. Myself tans if I need to, but I have a natural tan right now. What else have I done myself? Oh, can I tell you? I taught myself how to drive from YouTube tutorials. When I'd be like, fuck, what's the proper way to back out of a spot? Or like parking, I would, hold on, look up YouTube tutorials and teach myself how to properly park. I watched so many YouTube tutorials for parallel parking and then my friend showed me how to do it and I passed on the first try because I did have to parallel park on my driver's yeah. test. But yeah, like any little thing I've looked up, oh my God, what else? What else have I YouTube tutorial that it's like, really? I YouTube tutorial wow. eyebrow threading, but I didn't, I was too scared to do it on myself. I YouTube tutorialed, the nail thing was a big thing for me. I do my own acrylics. Lately I've been 
taking care of my cuticles a bit better and trying to get over my fear of the nippers, but I just love a nice clean cuticle. It's so good and of course it makes your nails last. I think my hardest thing right now is learning how to seal the cuticle when I do acrylic because that, I feel like that's the hardest part. Like I know how to lay down the acrylic, you know the beads, whatever. It could be better, but for me, like if I sealed the cuticle correctly, then that shit would be able to stay on and not lift. Because before it was lifting within a few days and then it went to like after a week it would lift. And then my most recent set I did, it took two weeks for it to finally lift, which is good because you know, you get a fill every two weeks, but you don't want them to lift at all. You want them to stay on for two weeks and just have the growth so you can just do your fill. I also need to learn how to do a fill, but I'll figure that out. I, I figure everything out, you know? Oh my God, it's about to overheat. I taught myself how to edit videos from that. I teach myself pretty much everything I need to know for work. I will always like go on there and see what, after I'm given a task, like I look it up cause I'm already like, yeah, I can do that for you. And I'm like, mm, how do I do this? I get the job done though. So I'm gonna pour this in now. I, I get afraid that it's gonna like burst. But what I was saying was, um, like about the YouTube tutorials, I even looked up YouTube tutorials for my husband because our kids started baseball this year. Cause like with the pandemic and everything, we didn't have them in sports and then we moved. And then here, it's like a whole process to get them in the sports program. So after a year of being here, I finally figured it all out and I got them enrolled in the sports program and then I was able to register them for sports. So they did baseball and my husband has never played baseball in his life. He never played sports, even though he's from the South. He's from Tennessee. I mean, okay. Well, he played basketball just like at the city park. Um, he was never on a team. He, his parents never like enrolled him in sports. And when he was in high school, I guess he did swim for like one year. So he was on the swim team, but that's basically it. And He's not into sports, so he didn't know anything about sports. And go to their practices, and I'm the one who knows. Like, my family, we didn't watch sports like that. My cousins and stuff did. My brothers were obviously, like, heavily into skateboarding. So I actually, like, watched that stuff. I loved going to, like, skateboard meet and greets or competitions. Like, skate demos and stuff. I, we enjoyed that whole culture. But um, we did play sports. Now, I was in cheerleading, my brothers were on football, like we did Pop Warner when we were young. And then, I think around third grade, yeah, I wanna say third grade, I um, started to like get into the idea of maybe doing softball because my ex-stepmom did softball and I mean, my dad didn't do baseball. He One year he did, but like they kinda like snuck him in for free because he, was an immigrant, his parents didn't sign him up for anything. And I think one of his brothers was just like, come on, like try to get it for him. So he has like a picture in a baseball uniform. But to him, the American dream was baseball and football. And I've talked about this like on a podcast that I did with someone, but like he was very self-hating because what he endured when he was growing up in the US with Spanish speaking parents and being a green card holder, and being from Mexico and you know English as his second language so he kind of felt like oh my god like we're poor and we're from Mexico like I want to live the American dream so he saw like baseball and football as like that's what the Americans do so we weren't allowed to play soccer terrible and he's like oh my god I regret it now of course like everything he and I are like this, like we have these conversations and everything. He's like, yeah, I, I regret it. I love that you're trying to get them into any sports possible. So he was like, oh, you guys are gonna do like football and baseball. So we did football cheer and then we did softball. I did softball for like a few years actually on and off. Like I did some in elementary school, a little middle school. And then I went back to it my junior or senior year of high school just because I was like, you know, I just wanna be a part of a team. Like I wanna have something before I leave. I didn't do it in high school. I did it for just like, what is it? Like club. Once I did it with Little League and then I did like the softball association. I don't know, doesn't matter. But yeah, so I know how to play softball. Was I good at it? Absolutely not. Did I know the rules 
Yes, because I had to do it. Did I hate it? Yes, it was boring for me because I was an outfielder, duh. But for some reason, I became a catcher. Was I good at catching? No, but did I get the job done like well enough for me to be the designated catcher? Yes, and I fucking hated it. Like I wasn't great at it, but you know, I had to do it. I think the actual catching, was I was okay. But there's more to catching than just catching the ball. You know, you have to try and you have to, and it's not great for someone with ADHD. You have to be on the lookout for the plays at the other bases to try and get someone out because stealing a base and all that is, and leading off and all that is allowed in softball, but then you can also get them out if they're like leading off, if they're stealing a base, like I can throw the ball and get you out if you get tagged. So I had to watch out for that shit. I'm not gonna watch out for that shit. I'm just trying to focus on what's going on right here. So it was very stressful. Did I get some people out at home? Yes, I did. Wasn't great, but I know the rules. And so I'm like a very like rule following person. So I'm like, oh my God, that's not in the rules. Like you're doing it wrong. So we went to their practices and I'm telling like the kids, oh, okay, next time do it like this or whatever. And Skylar was like, why don't you get out there and coach? And I was like, mm, absolutely not. And then um, Skylar was just like offering because we didn't have any assistant coaches. Like none of the other parents offered to assistant coach. So he was helping. He didn't know anything. And I'd be like, babe, you have to do this. And he'd be like, can you stop? I'm like, sorry. Like he doesn't know anything about baseball. But then they asked him to like officially assistant coach. So he went through the whole process, did the background check. And then I would send him YouTube tutorials on like coaching kids. And he's like, oh yeah, I've been watching YouTube tutorials already. Isn't that so cute? Nixon already ate and now I'm making Lowe's noodles because I don't want to dirty another dish. Um, but this is just to give you an idea of what every day looks like. I'm always in the kitchen, always making food. I just had to get Nixon another snack because he was hungry. He deserved to have something on the side of what he had for lunch. And in the meantime, I'm like, well, this is going to take a while to boil. So I am editing a TikTok that I did for my work account. And I, every time I film them for my work account, I'll go back and I'll screen record them. Like when you do the little preview, I'll screen record the preview and save it to my phone. And then when I want to post it on Instagram, because not all of our like followers on Instagram have TikTok, they want to be able to see some content. I'll cut it down and edit everything and then like crop it and I will repost it on our Instagram page. So that is what I'm doing right now. But yeah, this is the TikTok. I could have said, but so long's about Ricky, never mind he's trash. I was like, I could have said that. <laughs> that would have really- But I didn't, I said now I listen and laugh. Cause it didn't work out. I find that those little trend videos do better on reels than if I were to just get on there and talk and be like, hey guys, so this is what, those do better on TikTok because people are more likely to ask questions on TikTok. On Instagram and Reels, Instagram we just get like hate anytime we ended up on Reels talking about that. So just doing the trends makes it more fun and lighthearted. It's one thing like if we get hate comments on our TikTok because of course there are people who don't believe in surrogacy, they don't like it, they think you're exploiting poor women for the sake of rich people, which is completely valid and true in some cases in some countries. Except for my case and the people I work with, we all looked into becoming surrogates, like because we just wanted to help. Compensation is a nice thing to have because it's considered pain and suffering, but we also have to pass background checks and we have to be financially stable enough to do this so we are not relying on this as another income and we are not feeling the need to exploit ourselves and basically like sell our bodies for someone who can afford to buy it you know so it has to be like a from the heart thing and that's i mean of course everyone could probably say that but it's true like this surrogacy agency, well, center, pays probably the least because they try to make it accessible for normal families on the island because in Hawaii, they would have to travel to the mainland to try and do surrogacy, which is obviously more expensive. So we were the first agency to just do it all in Hawaii and have surrogates offer their services on island have the baby delivered on island of course we do international and we will do it in other states and we'll accommodate those people but 
it was created for the purpose of having local families have access to surrogacy if that's the route they chose to go and obviously it's easier on their pockets and we've had like a lot of just normal families who budget and save you're obviously not paying it in one lump sum there are payment plans it is manageable not for me i don't think i could afford surrogacy but i don't need surrogacy i wanted to find a way to offer my services so yeah anyway if we get hate on TikTok, it's not as bad because we're not really posting people's like personal stories on TikTok. We're just talking about our agency and you know, just fun stuff. But on Instagram, if we get hate from the reels, they will take it to our actual posts where, where we are announcing pregnancies and deliveries and trying to celebrate our intended parents and our surrogates. And they just ruin the moment for them. And they will go as far as like, actually harassing the intended parents or the surrogates themselves especially like people in Australia and like in the UK they have a huge issue with surrogacy so I try to keep it more lighthearted over there just because I don't want to ruffle any feathers and ruin any special moments for intended parents who do decide to share with us and allow us to post things on our Instagram because that's another thing a lot of our clients you know they want to stay private because the world has treated surrogacy like it's something that should be shameful and that should be a taboo and they'll be like, oh, they should have adopted, which of course adoption is a great option, but I've also learned from adoptees that it's not always what it seems like. Private adoption has its own problems and a lot of adoptees have said that they have strong feelings about people trying to become parents in any way, but that I've seen some say that they'd rather people do the surrogacy route because at least those women are volunteering to carry these children and they are being compensated for it at minimum. Whereas private adoptions, a lot of the parents will go after poor single mothers or teen parents and try and like manipulate them into feeling like there's no way they could ever do right by this child unless they were to give them their baby which I mean if you want to put your place your child up for adoption that's fine like I'm sure you had great intentions when you did that but some people are guilted into it and not made to feel like it was their choice for a surrogacy it is 100% our choice like no one is guilting us into this we go through too much for someone else child someone else's child that isn't related to us for us to be like manipulated and guilted into this, at least with our agency and the people we've spoken to. And you know, it says a lot when we have repeat surrogates with our agency, you know, it just goes well for them and they just love the experience. But yeah, that's a whole other thing, you know. I totally understand those who don't agree with it. I understand those who don't agree with adoption. You know, do you, but. Yeah, just don't yeah. harass these intended parents and surrogates. They're just trying to do right by the intended parents, and the intended parents are just trying to have a family. That child is going to be loved regardless. Like, they probably had to go through a lot to have a child, and you know what? I wish my parents would have put that much thought into having me.